So I'm going to spend just a few minutes talking about humans. And I caution you, I'm an ecologist. So I don't look at humans from a human perspective. I look at it from an ecological <coughs> perspective. European explorers, when they arrived, were amazed at the vast and pristine freshwater sea. Native North Americans have lived on these lakes for thousands of years, based on a sustainable use of resources, leaving a very small ecological footprint. And that was evident when Europeans arrived, because the ecosystems they saw, the landscapes they saw, were basically intact, even though they'd lived there for thousands of years. Since the arrival of Europeans, humans have become the dominant agents of ecosystem change. I don't think anyone would argue that point. We leave a very large ecological footprint. We like to build roads and expressways so we can get to where we want to get. We've developed boats and watercraft that'll do almost everything, take us wherever we want to go. We look at islands not just as habitats, we look at them as real estate, and we like to develop real estate. We change water chemistry, especially uh, eutrophication. So where, where we have our biggest effect, uh, water quality tends to change, and many others. I mean, these are just some symptoms of that large ecological footprint. And I'm not, these are all, from my perspective, these are all symptoms. These are not, these are not the fundamental problem, because they all have one thing in common. They're all caused by human activity. So rather than just focus on the symptoms, Let's just look for a minute at, at where, what's driving that? What's driving human activity, the results in these kinds of symptoms? If you look at Georgian Bay trophic structure, I've already said we've introduced many invasive species, carp, sea lamprey, spiny water flea, zebra mussels, phragmites, you know, are the issue we're most caught up with now, Eurasian milfoil. And at the lower level, bacteria, fungi, plankton, we don't even know um, what we've introduced there. We simply haven't studied it long enough, but we've probably added thousands of invasive species at this lower trophic level. Okay, there are two primary factors. Again, this is from an ecological perspective. Two primary factors influencing human effects on the ecosystem. One is population growth. It's an obvious one. But the one that many of us tend to focus on now is human perspectives on their environment. The value system we apply to decisions we make as they relate to our environment. Population growth is obvious. Most of us have seen this plaque somewhere on Georgian Bay. As for me, I labor always to prepare a way for those willing after me to follow it. Well, we followed him by the hundreds, then by the thousands, and then by the millions. The best information we have is that uh, populations in the Great Lakes Basin prior to 1700 averaged from 100 to 200,000 humans in the Great Lakes Basin. And that was fairly consistent over a long period of time. Since 1700, we've reached almost 50 million. The same trend's true in the Georgian Bay Coast. <coughs> Original populations numbered in the thousands now number in the many hundreds of thousands. So human population pressure is a major driver. And certainly being close to the GTA will continue to have a huge influence on uh, what happens in Georgian Bay. But let's look at this one. Human perspectives on their environment, the value systems we apply. And I want to spend just a minute with this because I think you'll see it has a bearing on all the kinds of discussions we will have. This is the background in which we try to analyze what we're going to do with our environment in the future. Original human residents saw themselves as part of the natural ecosystem, not above it. They were a product of their environment and felt a strong uh, dependency on it. This is an ecocentric worldview and a value system where the ecosystem is the origin of all life on Earth. I don't think many of you would argue with me that all life originates from the ecosystem, from the smallest plant to humans. We're a product of our ecosystem. European societies brought with them a very different view of humans and the relationship with the environment. They perceived humans to be separate from and dominant over the ecosystems in which they exist. Humans are seen as the center of the universe and the sole purpose for which ecosystems exist. This is an anthropocentric worldview and value system. As you know, most scientists say we're now living in the Anthropocene. This is the epoch of the Anthropocene. Humans are the dominant force changing the face of the planet. And because beliefs drive behavior, this has a profound effect on how we treat our ecosystem. 
Okay, so what are the end attributes of uh, anthropocentrism that have this effect? And I think you'll all recognize these. Humans are separate from natural ecosystems and no longer dependent on them. As we, as we get more and more urban, this is more and more true. Why do we need natural ecosystems? We live in an urban environment, the food comes in from the farms, and the waste goes out. Why do we need natural ecosystems? Natural ecosystems and other species have no intrinsic value, only their utility value to serve human needs. If we can't eat them or they don't entertain us, they have no value. That is our value system. There is no intrinsic value in natural ecosystems. Natural processes are seen as mechanical and able to be controlled and managed by humans. We think we can manage everything in our environment, but when it comes to natural, natural systems, we've done a terrible job. We've destroyed natural ecosystems around the globe. Ultimate faith in human cleverness and technology. We can solve any problem with our technology. Higher value is placed on short-term economic and political object objectives rather than long-term ecological sustainability. We see that happening virtually every day. And finally, populations of other species need to be controlled by humans. But increases in human populations are always seen as desirable. There is not a town, village, or city in Canada that doesn't want a larger human population. It's, it's, it's something, it's biologically programmed in us. More is always better, but more of us, not more of anything else. Even though we're the largest consumer of resources, there can never be too many humans. Based on that, when I show you this photograph, Georgian Bay, when we look at this landscape, do we see a dynamic, fascinating, and unique natural ecosystem, the kind I've just tried to describe to you, globally unique, or just real estate waiting to be developed? And just the last bit on wilderness. Wilderness has been defined as the most intact, undisturbed, wild natural areas left on our planet. Those last truly wild places that humans do not control and have not developed. We're fortunate on the Georgian Bay Coast. Most of us live in a near wilderness or semi-wilderness environment. And that's unique. Think of Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, Lake Huron. How much wilderness is there left? We still have some on the Georgian Bay Coast. And most of us are blessed to be able to live within or near that relatively pristine wilderness. This is a quote out of Time Magazine just two months ago. Since 1993, 1.3 million square miles of wilderness, 10% of what's left on Earth, has disappeared. Scientists recently found that in less than a century there could be no wilderness left. Nowhere for untouched evolution, or natural carbon storage, or human escape. That's probably the rate at which wilderness is being lost on the Georgian Bay Coast as well, over that same time period. Do we value the Georgian Bay wilderness, and how will we preserve it and the unique natural ecosystem which it contains? Fundamental question, I think, why many of us are here today. Do we value it? If so, how are we going to protect it? Because I just outlined the kind of stresses that there are on it. And I'll just leave you with one thought. Perhaps this needs to begin with a reevaluation of our values and attitudes as these relate to unique natural ecosystems of Georgian Bay. Can we get past looking at this ecosystem as something to drive our economy, create jobs, increase the amount of you know, recreational use? Can we not look at this as a unique ecosystem and give that some, some primary priority focus? The key point I want to leave with you, this is a globally unique natural ecosystem. We are blessed to live within it and to have enjoyed it. I think there's a, a responsibility on us to show some stewardship and protection for it. It's nice to have a couple of takeaways, a couple of things that you can develop consensus on, at least to you know, initialize the next step. So just thinking about it, I would, I would hope that we would all agree we could have a consensus on a couple of basic principles. The Georgian Bay Coast supports truly unique natural ecosystems in need of stewardship and protection. Okay, secondly, based on that, without a concerted effort by those, and, and I, I like this wording, living within and functioning as a part of this ecosystem. Many elements of the ecosystem are at risk of being degraded or lost. And it's worded that way because 
I, I'd like to, us to think of, our, of ourselves as a functioning part of the ecosystem, not as its masters or observers or participants or visitors, but part of that ecosystem. 